Hi, right, how's it going? Uh, this is uh, Javier with uh, the team, uh, Team Crimson, and uh, we're finally doing our Narakami deck profile on uh, Vanquisher. So uh, let's go ahead and start out. This is the starter. Everyone knows what the starter does. It's really, really good. I've seen uh, a couple of deck profiles on YouTube where the players are actually running two copies. I think that's a good bad idea and a bad and, and also a bad idea um, because you're also taking away from the consistency factor of the deck. Uh, with your grade one and grade two lineup, but either way, run this card. This card is still very good. Uh, you gain, you gain a basically almost a free unflip, in addition to binding something. So you, can, you really can't pass that up. So done with the starter. Then we're gonna move on to grade threes. I run the four copies of uh, Vanquisher Sparking. Uh, I really like this card. Um, how his skill works, you know, once he hit Thunderstrike four, it, it's pretty much its own engine. Uh, with that said, you're you're unflipping damage every time, and you're gaining the skill to just CB one for for two binds, uh, essentially. Uh, especially if you're going into a Stride unit where it does have a Thunderstrike ability, so it's a free bind. You really cannot pass that up. Um, moving on to three copies of Descendant Sigma. Um, reason I am running him, him is because he's a very, very good uh, backup, uh, especially if you're playing Link Joker or if you happen not to be able to get into his sparking for whatever the case may be. Uh, his his skill to to restand Zillion. Plus that power is very, very good, especially against Link Joker with a triangle lock. Or if you're just trying to hurry up and finish the game off and just overwhelm your opponent, especially if they have, you know, literally less than six cards in hand, you're pretty much going to win. Um, also with that, I do not run uh, the old school Vanquisher because I think he's honestly uh, obsolete when it comes to how the deck is, is being ran. Uh, moving on to grade twos. Run four copy of Grizzle. This card is awesome. You know, it, its first effect is, is, is seriously some some serious stuff happening because it gets targeted through a attack. It gets locked. It gets retired. It does not matter. It gets paralyzed. It does not matter. Uh, you're going to bind something. Period. Uh, it's very very good. I think the only card it that this that this uh, card would actually have a hard time against would probably be Overlord, because how the Destiny works with its uh, with its ability to target the rearguard circle and not this unit. So, um, but yeah, it's a Thunderstrike uh, ability allows the game plus nine k for for no apparent reason. Okay, making it a eighteen k beat stick, and then you not only attack the Vanguard, we also attack a rearguard as well. So for one card, you get two attacks in with uh, some uh, some uh, power to it. Uh, moving on to uh, the Monarch Berserker Chadru. If I'm pronouncing his name wrong, please correct me. If not, that's awesome. Uh, he's been essential in a Vanquisher build since the uh, since the beginning. You get a a bind uh, to go off, and you get to draw a card. So. You really can't pass that up. He's very essential early game. Yes, he's only a, a AK beater, but it, it don't matter because you're not really trying to ride him as the vanguard. You're trying to ride him as a rear guard. Um, other than that, his art is very very good. Uh, I've run four copies. Um, I'm seeing other people run uh, three because they're doing something else with their uh, deck lineup. Uh, like before, you know, you could run four, you could run three, you could run two. It, it don't matter. But for me personally, as a player reference, I run four. Uh, mostly because of the whole consistency factor. It's really, really nice. Then I'm running four copies of Helena. Uh, it helps to draw, especially if if you're trying to, to end the game or just early game, first stride, go into whatever the case may be, and then you call this card to rear guard, you're going to be able to get a plus off of, uh, off of it uh, attack-wise because it will go from a 9K to a 11K, and then you get to draw a card. So that will really help you out if you, you know, let's say the situation is, is that you're not able to get sparking, you stride, 
call this card to field, draw another card, you'll increase the probability of getting that grade three sparking that you need so desperately. Uh, moving on to grade ones. I'm gonna start out with four of the new perfect guard. Uh, I love this card a lot. Uh, in comparison to its predecessor, I would say that uh, it, it is nice to unflip, but the thing is you already have sparking that does that a Thunder Strike 4. The only logical argument against that is that you can still unflip if you're not able to get to Thunder Strike 4. But even with that said, uh, it's a free perfect guard if you think about it because of its skill. It's a Thunder Strike skill where you know you go to use it, you perfect guard, you drop a card because it, it, it is a PG, and then you're going to turn around, and once it leaves the Guardian Circle, so after that attack, you get to draw a free card. So that also helps you get sparking, as well as to a combination of uh, any, almost any other card. Uh, moving on to Stride, or not Strides, I'm sorry, um, Stride Father. I'm going to run four copies of Mighty Bolt. Uh, so explanatory, he just went ahead and just gets you sparking straight off the bat. Uh, and it helps uh, apply early pressure as well. Um, moving on to four copies of Smashbox. This card is very, very essential, I believe, because uh, you're going to put this behind a unit, and then you're going to turn around and swing with it. Well, your opponent can't deny a griffin. Your opponent can't lock it. They can't retire it. They can't paralyze it during that battle. Uh, so they have to be forced to think at least one to two steps ahead and wait till after the attack is done, then they're able to do whatever shenanigans they gotta do. Otherwise, you're gonna hit them with whatever unit this card is boosting. Um, other than that, you can, uh, I believe, yeah, you can push it into soul and then you get to unflip. So that's pretty nice too, so that helps. Uh, and then finally for grade ones, two copies of Dragon Dancer. Uh, like I said, it just helps you to draw, so it helps with the consistency factor with the deck. Uh, you can already tell that the grade 2s and the grade 1s uh, are mostly there to help you draw. And you're going to plus off of it either through a skill or through something that's going to be related to drawing a card. Just to help you get what you need, helps thin off the deck, and so forth. Uh, moving on to triggers. Uh, my trigger lineup for this deck is... Four crits of uh, Shiva. Uh, basically, you just push it into soul and uh, get something uh, plus power. Um, and then also, it is a uh, eradicator because, uh, like I said, I am running Sigma, so it does help out with uh, Sigma and uh, Zillion uh, on the Vanguard uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so yep, yeah. so there's that. And then, as a uh, tech. So I think it's a good idea. You don't necessarily have to do it, but I run four copies of, of the Brawler Critical Trigger. All because uh, mid to late game, I could just call it to field, put it on top of the deck, shuffle deck. Since obviously I don't have a Brawler as a Vanguard, but you're doing that to increase the probability of getting your, tri your uh, criticals to go off to quickly end the game. Because you don't really want to lag the game slower than what it might already be. Next, <clears throat> I'm on, I run four copies of the chicken. This chicken is cute. I love it. Um, it's a draw trigger, four draws. You know, I, I don't play stands with this deck because I honestly feel that in a lean joker meta, stands are honestly uh, irrelevant, and that's just my, my opinion. Um, I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with draws. Uh, it kind of sucks for, in the sense of like, you know, for shield, but you get it off during a trigger check or if you get it off during a damage check, it, it's going to do you some good. You're going to draw the extra card that you need or you're going to draw that 10k or you're going to draw that heal trigger you can use for a G Guardian and so forth. So that, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then finally, I run four copies of the new heal trigger. Uh, I love... The G Guardian that goes with this card. It's very, very good. Um, we all know what this does. Impede is awesome. So there you go. That's that's the heal. And its art is really, really good too. So uh, next, moving on to Strides. I run one copy of V 
VMAX. And the reason why I only run one copy of VMAX is because if I'm going to go into him, then that's going to be game. I'm going to wait until my opponent is at five damage. I'm not going to horse around. I'm going in for the win that turn. So there's no point to run two copies. You know, this isn't Phantom Blaster Diablo. This isn't anything else that's similar to that. You're going to take the damage if you have no rear guards. Hands down, period. Pretty straightforward. Um, there you go for VMAX. Next, <clears throat> I run four copies of V Buster. V Buster is very awesome. I love his skill to where, you know, it doesn't really necessarily take away from how Nurakami used to be with the whole Counter Blast Heavy. You know, it does have the, the Soul Blast for its skill, so that's really, really good. And then it's uh, it's Thunder, uh, Thunder Strike 7 skill to gain that extra crit that Quad Drive you're going to get. Uh, usually, on my first stride, I'm either going to go to him or I'm going to go into Voltage. Uh, if I'm going to him, it's usually to get more binds to go off so I can reach a Thunder Strike 7 quicker. So that way, my second stride, I'm going to him again. Or I'm going into him first to help uh, get to Thunderstrike 4 if I'm having a very, very bad day. So, otherwise, we all know what V-Buster does. He's very, very good. Uh, I think he is really essential in the Vanquisher build. Uh, moving on to two copies of Voltage. Voltage is very good. Uh, originally, I would like to run four... But, you know, that was before Link Joker happened again. So, now I'm only running down to two. I love its skill. Uh, not necessarily, if you stride into him and you go on top of Sparking, you're not going to get the additional effect if, it, if the stride unit has a Thunderstrike ability because Voltage does not state that it has a Thunderstrike ability. But you're still going to retire something and bind it uh, through the first initial skill. And then, if he does hit, you're going to be able... To get that the extra bind in regardless and then if you use him uh mid game or late game his uh, gb3 is pretty impressive especially if you got you know x amount of bind cards from your opponent so it's gonna be very very hard for them to even guard that uh moving on to one copy of uh zolta zapper uh he's really good <clears throat> i like the fact that he just gains 10k for no reason and then at the end of your turn uh, you know, you can just uh, CB1 and uh, for every bind card in the bind zone, for every two, you're going to bind something else. So that's pretty nice. So already, you know, you can nuke field like that at the end of your turn or at the end of the attack of him. So that does help out, especially if you're facing Luard, if you're facing other decks where you're going to be worrying about what's on their field. So, so there you go. So there's that. Closer Dragon, the GB8. I have got to use him once so far. He is very, very good. Uh, powers up the field in himself like crazy. Um, he's very, very, very essential. Um, just one, you know, you just want to run one copy. Because uh, still, GB8s are, you know, still kind of hard to get to. Uh, in the sense of like how fast he can be. So, so there you go. So that's Closer Dragon. Next, I run two copies of Zillion. Uh, like I said before, you know, if you're facing against Lynch Joker and you're trying to go lock, he's the best card to go into. Uh, otherwise, if you're having a bad day and you're not really able to uh, get sparking as quickly, you know, you can try to pressure them as much as possible. Um, other than that, it, it's Zillion. It's, you know, restanding. You're, you're going to get five dry checks off of them. So there you go. So there's that. Next, for G Guardians, I run two copies of Borok. Borok is very good. Uh, he gains plus 10k, so he's kind of similar to... Uh, to... Uh, oh, what what was that card? Plotmaker? Uh, but instead of, you know, obviously being Ritual, it's being uh, Thunderstrike. So, so there's a plus there, and then you get to bind a rested unit. Uh, so there you go with that. I run one copy of this... Mainly because so I could flip it over. I really don't use him by himself whatsoever. Uh, he's there for Impede. Um, I only run one copy of Impede right now. I would love to run two in the near future. 
uh, impede is severely dangerous. Um, in one game, I was able to stop my my opponent's uh, zinging bird from being uh, restood because I was able to stop uh, Blaze. So with that said, very good tech. A lot of people who do run to uh, more power to you, especially in those mirror matches. Uh, other people run um, the other G Guardian. Oh, what was its name? I can't think of its name. But anyways, it, it gives a uh, pass over for uh, resist, but it, it don't matter. Uh, you run two of this guy, you're you're pretty much set. If you run one, you're you're almost there. So either way, it's impede. He does what he does. And then lastly, one copy of Seabreeze. Um, Seabreeze is very very good. He just you know he, he's been around for for quite some time. So we all know what he does. Uh, the deck is obviously GB reliant, so you got to have him. So uh, so there's that. That's my deck profile on Vanquisher. Um, so like I said, this is uh, No Skill Javier. And uh, this is a uh, deck profile. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, if not, then we'll still like and subscribe. So adios.